We pray together. Dear Father, I ask you to give me strength to live this day as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your spirit so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. Please stand. Rejoice. Rejoice. Praise. We will praise. Glory. We sing glory. Glory to 
for the kids to come on up front. I'm going to put these down the aisle here because I forgot to do it sooner and I'm dropping stickers. Okay, okay everybody, I want to show you something here and it's hard to see, but I have this big coin, okay? The big coin, I'm going to let everybody kind of see it, okay? So everybody sees this coin, okay? You got it, you got it, you got it. And I'm going to turn it around because there's a different thing on the back. Okay, this is pretty quick. You guys see this coin? So I'm going to ask you what you saw. Okay, can anyone tell me what this coin is about? Okay, what do you think it's about? About homelands? Yeah, because it has the state of Nevada. That's right. What do you think it might be? This side looks like a police badge. Homeland? Yes. It is. This is from the Attorney General, the State of Nevada investigations, because we got someone in our church, you better be careful when you're around him. Because, so, so we give out, you know, we give out those cross coins here at the church. Well, he also said, here, I want you to have one of these, Pastor Dave. And he gave this to me a couple of years ago. And yeah, it's the, the Attorney General, that's the person who's in charge of all the laws. And laws are good things. We're going to read stories in the Bible today about God's law and how God's law is good because it, it helps us all learn how to live together. That's a good thing because if we didn't have laws and people did whatever they wanted, you'd get hurt all the time. And so it's good for God's laws to show us how we're supposed to live. Okay? We're going to pray and then it's time to go off to Sunday school. Okay? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for laws which help us live together. Thank us for people who help enforce those laws. We pray through Jesus, our friend, our Lord, and our Savior. Amen. Okay, everybody, you can go and get some stickers and then ooh, Sunday school, and we'll see you after Sunday school. While they're going to do that, please make note of all of those printed announcements that are in your bulletin. I especially want to call attention to next week. What's going to happen here is before and after worship, we're going to make personal hygiene packs with Soap for Hope and Lutheran Social Services. We'll set it all up in the chapel. We'll have all of the items that we need. All we need is for you to go in there and you go get a bag, walk around the table, put the items in the bag and just keep doing that. And we're, we're, we're challenging ourselves to make 2,000 hygiene packs, which will almost double the total production of the Soap for Hope ministry over the last couple of years. So that's next week before and after worship. Plan on coming either one of the times or both of those times, okay? So we're going to, oh, and Pastor Rolf, uh, uh, the, the, the choir rehearsal starts this Thursday at 6.30 to 7.45 p.m. So a lot of things are starting up this week and uh, the next week for the fall season. We're going to continue with scripture readings. And Joe, you're scheduled to read? I'm going to read it because because I'm changing it anyway. Okay, so we're going to read the uh, Christian skip past the uh, psalm. I'm going to jump over to the reading from the book of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word 
and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror, for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Please stand. Please be seated. It's my church. I do whatever I want, okay? So stand up, sit down, whatever. We're just going to do that. And since it is, here's what I want to do. I'm not going to give you the best sermon I've given in my life like I did at the 8 o'clock service today. We have a special guest. And you enjoy every time we have a special guest from our Tamil Indian congregation. And so I'm going to ask Dr. Henry Selvaraj to come on up here and do the introductions. Yeah, our, our special guest today is uh, uh, Mr. Clement Vedanayagam Sastriya. Uh, he's a, a direct descendant of uh, Vedanayagam Sastriya, who was born in the year 1770 and uh, passed away in 1864. He was a court poet in the court of uh, King Serfoji, who ruled a place called Tanjore in Tamil Nadu, uh, that is the state of India. Uh, Sastriya, uh, Sastriya has written more than 130 books containing Tamil literature and uh, Christian songs. His uh, contribution to Tamil literature, particularly to the Christian Tamil literature, is very significant. Most of his songs are sung in Tamil churches in and, uh, in and uh, out of India. His prayer was that his descendants uh, should carry out his ministry until our Lord's second coming. God honored his prayer and has been choosing one or two in each generation to do this ministry. Clement comes from the uh, uh, Clement uh, comes as the eleventh Sastriya in the seventh generation. He has been involved in the ministry for the past 22 years. He has traveled extensively to many countries in the world, proclaiming the good news through music. He sings and plays violin. Clement. Can I bring it? Yeah, thank you. Let's look to God in prayer. Father God, once again, we come to your holy presence, your master. Lord, we are not whom we say we are, but we are whom you say we are, Lord. Every time when we come to thy throne of grace, Lord, we realize our worthlessness, but yet we believe that you have made us worthy through your son, Christ Jesus, to call you our Father. Even now, as we're going to meditate on your word, Lord, we ask you to be with us. Lord, teach us and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, it is a real joy for me to be here. Um, <clears throat> the last time I visit, visited your church was in the year 2016, I guess. Um, so I'm happy to be here again. 
I thank Dr. Henry Silverath for that lovely introduction about me and my ministry. <coughs> also, my thanks goes to Pastor Dave for having given me an opportunity to share the word to this lovely congregation this morning. Um, the sermon that I've come to share with you this morning is a very simple sermon. As you know, I'm a preacher from India. There are a lot of good things to talk about Indian preachers and a few bad things as well. One of the bad things is Indian preachers, thank you so much, Indian preachers can't give a short sermon. <laughs> Don't have to worry. So I know my time limits. <laughs> I know your tolerance level too. <laughs> so it's going to be a three point sermon this morning. No big theology involved or nothing profound that I'm going to talk. Learning at the feet of Jesus is my first point. And secondly, falling at the feet of Jesus and worshiping at the feet of Jesus. Somebody learned at the feet of Jesus. Somebody fell at the feet of Jesus and worshiped at the feet of Jesus. She's none other than sister of Martha and Lazarus, Mary. It's if you turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, and verse 39. Um, let me read that verse for you. Luke 10, 39. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Mary, she listened to the words of Jesus. She learned at the feet of Jesus. Let me tell you something, my dear friends. Learning is a necessary skill for anybody who wants to learn something. If you do not know how to listen to people and you don't learn anything in life. As Christians, we ought to learn. We need this skill of listening. And that is the reason I think why, uh, why God has created us with two years so that we can listen more and with one month so that we speak less. <laughs> Some people talk too much. Sometimes I think they, they may need an extra mouth. So they go on and on and on sometimes. <laughs> In some churches, I've seen that a lot of time is spent during praise and worship. Yes, you know, I, 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 liked, I, I like the time when we all praise and worship together. But my question is, when it is God's turn to talk to us through his servant, we don't want to hear much, isn't it? We need to understand when we do praise and worship, we are talking to God. And during the sermon time when pastor is going to share the word, God is talking to us. Isn't it? Whenever uh, I go on preaching assignments, before I go stay, before I take the pulpit, I ask the concerned pastor as to how much, uh, how, well, the sermon duration, how long I can go for. Some, in some places, pastors would tell me, Brother Clement, it's your time, you can go for an hour. In some places, <laughs> one and a half hours or two hours. Uh, I mean, it can't happen here. Back home in India, yes. We, we um, I told the Indian preachers, we talk a lot. But here, if I do, you'll kill me. <laughs> So, but I'm, I'm happy and thankful to Pastor Dave. Uh, he has given me plenty of time to preach this morning. 
Don't ask me how much, I won't tell you. You have to wait and watch. Some pastors, some places when I go, pastors, they tell me, Clement, the stage is yours. There is no restriction in time. You can go up to 10 minutes. <laughs> so, very liberal sometimes. We need to allow God to talk to us so that we will learn something. Dr. William Buckley, in one of his books, he writes, we have to call a day a wasted day if we haven't learned something new. A true Christian is a learning Christian, my dear friends. A true church is a learning church. We read about the early apostolic church this church was a learning church. This church was a growing church because this church was anchored in the teachings of the disciples. It was a learning church. Let us allow God to talk to us. When we, when we hear a preacher preach, that means we are sitting at his feet. We are listening to his voice. When we read the word, God is talking to us. When we hear somebody sing a beautiful song, a Christian song, that means God is talking to us. We are listening to his voice. We need to spend more time at his feet so that he can talk to us more. Sometimes when uh, I'm invited for um, birthday parties, uh, people, families, they request me to uh, do a prayer and uh, um, share the word. <clears throat> so sometimes when I go, people in the house, they would come and tell me, Clement, brother, so nice to have you today. My, this is, today is my daughter's birthday, and uh, we'd like to tell you something. Being a weekday, you know, it's very difficult for us to have a long session because the next day people will have to go for work. And uh, so try to do a short prayer. And let's read a short passage from the Bible and a short chorus and a short sermon, a short prayer, a short passage from the Bible, a short chorus and a short sermon. And after the cake cutting, they will all sing, Happy long life to you. Why that long life? Keep that short. <laughs> you want a short prayer? You want a short chorus? You want a short sermon? But you want a long life? <laughs> Seek God's presence. I love God to talk to you. Mary. She listened to the words of Jesus. She sat at the feet of Jesus, learning at the feet of Jesus. Secondly, I said, falling at the feet of Jesus. Mary fell at the feet of Jesus. We know when. Um, we read that in John's Gospel, chapter 11, and verse 32, mm. yeah, when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She fell at the feet of Jesus because her heart was filled with grief and sorrow as she lost her only brother Lazarus. She knew that she would be comforted at the feet of Jesus. She knew that she would get some consolation at the feet of Jesus. She fell at the feet of Jesus. Where do we run? During our difficult times, my dear friends, whose feet do we fall at? During the times of distress, 
when our hearts are filled with grief and sorrow, where do we go? Mary fell at the feet of Jesus. In the Old Testament, we read about the woman Shunammite. She fell at the feet of Prophet Elisha because when she lost her only son, when her only son died, she ran to the man of God and she fell at his feet. Also, in this context, I would like to um, tell you something that falling at somebody, the practice of falling at somebody's feet is very much Eastern. Is very much Eastern. People in India, uh, we can relate to that and we understand that more. Because even now in India, young people, they fall at the feet of their elders as a mark of respect. Here in the Western countries, people don't do that. They don't greet uh, people by falling at their feet. They say, good morning, hello, hi, what's up? That's it. So, but the, I mean, the reason why I'm telling you this is, uh, many people, even in the West, sometimes they think that Christianity is a Western religion. And the Bible is written in the Eastern style. Christianity is, is, a, is an Eastern religion. Anyway, um, <clears throat> Fine. So falling at somebody's feet happens when someone is troubled. And Mary, in her case, we know her heart was filled with grief and sorrow. And where do we go, my dear friends, when we go through difficult times in our life? Some people, they try to get into yoga and meditation to escape their worries. Some people, they watch movies or try to play a game to divert themselves from the worldly worries. And many people opt alcohol, is it not? To forget their miseries. But all these are temporary, my dear friends. All these are temporary. Only when you fall at the feet of Jesus, only when you turn to Jesus, and you will be blessed by the peace of everlasting and the joy unspeakable. And there is a practice in India that when people, when they have problems, they immediately go to their pastor, which is good, which is good. They go behind evangelists, they go behind preachers, and they uh, request them to pray for them. I mean, it, there's nothing wrong in doing so. But my question is, is it right for us to expect somebody to fall at the feet of Jesus on our behalf? My concern and my burden for my problems is much greater than the concern of anybody else. My concern and my burden is not the same as that of the burden of any preacher or any pastor or any, or any evangelist. What am I supposed to do? I should fall at the feet of Jesus. I should come to his presence and I should pray. 119. Psalm, Psalm 119 and verse 92 reads as follows. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. Are we turning to God's word during our difficult times? Mary fell at the feet of Jesus because she knew that she would be consoled, that she would be comforted at the feet of Jesus. Learning at the feet of Jesus. Falling at the feet of Jesus. And thirdly and finally, I see some smiles when I said finally. Yes, I'm going to finish. That's my final point. Worshipping at the feet of Jesus. 
Yes. We know where Mary worshipped and how she worshipped. It's in John's Gospel, chapter 12, when she anointed Jesus with an expensive perfume. The room was filled with fragrance. It is an act of worship, my dear friends. She sought the glory of Jesus by honoring him. Why did she do, why, why did she do so? Because her heart was overwhelmed with gratitude as her Lord Jesus raised her only brother Lazarus from the dead. Her grateful heart made her do so. She broke that expensive perfume on the feet of Jesus. In Jewish tradition, um, it was not very common. It was unconventional for any woman to let her hair loose, untie her hair in public. But here we see a woman and we read that she wiped Jesus' feet with her hair. The point that I'm trying to tell you is Mary's tradition did not stop her from worshipping her Lord. Nothing could stop her there. People were talking so many bad things about her there. And Judas was telling why she, should, why she should waste such an expensive perfume on the feet of Jesus. She could might as well sell this and give it to the poor. Why does she have to do this? Her heart was filled with gratitude. And she couldn't stop doing that, my dear friends. Jesus completely changed her family situation. When she lost all hope when her brother died, Jesus changed the scenario. Jesus brought back her brother to life. Let me tell you something. When we experience the goodness of Christ Jesus in our life, when we experience the blessing of Christ Jesus in our life, we will not keep quiet but worship him. We will worship. If we have a heart of gratitude, we can't keep quiet, but we will worship him, my dear friends. God has done so much to us. I, I always, whenever I come to the U.S., whenever I come to America, I see this country as a blessed country. I don't know if you realize that, but as a person from a different country, when I see the, US, the, the United States of America, it is so much blessed in many aspects. Many aspects. Are we grateful to God? Are we worshipping him for all that he has done for us? The learning at the feet of Jesus. Falling at the feet of Jesus. And worshipping at the feet of Jesus. God bless you. I want you to know that we are in the presence of uh, a pastor who's come all the way from India, and he didn't use up all of his allotted time that I gave him. So you're going to hear my sermon. <laughs> no, I want to. I want to ask you a, a few things. Uh, we we appreciate so very much that we are a church that is providing uh, the gospel to be preached uh, from the United States of America, India, South Korea, and Liberia, all on this day, this weekend. That's the kind of church that, that you're a part of. And I'm so glad you ended by talking to us about the United States of America. We are guaranteed uh, by law the freedom to practice whatever faith we choose to practice. We are guaranteed that and the safety of that. Um, in India, however, that is not the case, is it? No. Could you tell us yeah. um, there's how many people are in India and what, what it's like in the different parts of India for Christians? Because we'd like to hear that, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things are different in India now. A few years back, 
Yes, we indeed had the freedom to choose our faith, the religion, and what we eat and how we dress and all that. And uh, things are not like before these days because of certain groups uh, that are supported by the present government. And um, these groups are anti-Christian groups. And uh, they feel that um, uh, there is a danger for their Indian culture because of Christianity, especially Christianity. Of course, they are against Islam as well. Um, the only the, the thing that they hate about Christians and Christianity is because they know that we Christians, we try to convert people. Yes, once upon a time when missionaries came from the West to India, uh, they involved a lot of conversions, but it is not happening uh, in that level and magnitude at the moment. Uh, we have a lot of restrictions. We can't, uh, we can't preach in public. Um, of course, there are some Christian schools compared to the north. The southern part of India is much safe. Uh, but we don't know when restrictions may come to the southerners, may come any time. It may come any time. And we are praying that God should open uh, new doors so that uh, uh, we can preach the word like before and many would come to the fold. Um, Yes, we have a problem, we have our difficulties, but yet God is good. God is doing mighty things in India. Many people, many non-Christians, God is choosing people even from those anti-Christian groups. And the, uh, the, the, we, we are uh, consoled and comforted when we hear somebody from that group when they give a testimony saying that they have found Jesus, they have met Jesus, and that is the greatest consolation we have, <laughs> although we have difficulties to spread the word these days. And I um, expect the church to pray for us, to pray for um, the preachers in India. Some are persecuted there uh, for the sake of the gospel. And yes, uh, some people, some missionaries are beaten. <coughs> they are chased out of their homes. And um, I, I, I expect churches here to pray for our pastors there, missionaries there, and for our believers there, so that we will have um, um, a good uh, uh, condition to spread the word in the future. So at the other worship services, I shared some of my experiences this past week, uh, being in Durango, Colorado, and riding the, the steam locomotive from Durango to Silverton and back off nine hours. Right next to me, there was a, a couple, a husband and wife, uh, and they're from India. And so I thought, oh, I've got an in for conversation. And I said, well, what part of India are you from? Because I know a lot of people from southern India that are part of my church. And um, they were from northern India. Oh, okay. And knowing, I, knowing this from before, the last time you were here, we talked about this too. Um, I thought, oh, okay, I don't want to be an overbearing Christian and, and reinforcing their negative uh, ideas of what uh, Christians are like. And so we just talked about where we traveled and, and such. And then yeah, by about hour seven of this train ride, he said, so Pastor Dave, he started calling me Pastor Dave. And it turned to faith questions. Uh, can you have a, a wife and a family? Uh, not knowing what our church is like. And I said, let me ask my wife and children. <laughs> But, but he wanted to know a little bit more about what kind of Christians we are. 
So that takes place even here in the United States, traveling on a tourist train, uh, someone from northern India that's not friendly to Christians, and a, a pastor in the United States, that because of our blessed connection, I was able then to say, I'm going to have a conversation with this person from across the world. Uh, could you lead us in a, a short prayer for the church in India? Yeah. And let's all join in prayer. Father God, once again, we come to your presence, dear Lord. Lord, even now we come to you, especially for India and for the people there. Lord, we thank you for the word that was given to us through your servants from the West once upon a time. Had we not received your word then, Lord, we would have perished. Lord, but we are grateful for your missionaries. Lord, today, you know, the scenario is very different. Lord, we know, you know how people are suffering, especially the Christian community there. Lord, they are not able to choose their faith and they are not able to worship you in freedom. But dear Lord, we know that there is an end to everything. Lord, you are in control and you're watching everything. And you know what to do and when to do and how to do, Lord. We're not here to teach you, but all we ask of you, Lord, deliver us. Lord, let the good news be spread throughout India so that many more will be blessed. Lord, let others experience the blessing that we are blessing to, we, we are experiencing today, dear Master. Lord, you have chosen us. We, have, we did not choose you, Lord. Lord, you have brought us to the light of understanding you through your son Christ Jesus. Lord, let people in India understand you. Lord, let them experience the love of Christ Jesus. Let them understand the very purpose of, purpose of your coming to this world. And let them understand what the supreme sacrifice of Christ Jesus and why that sacrifice was paid. Yes, dear Master, we come at every politician in your almighty hands. Lord, we come at every anti-Christian in your almighty hands. The one who is with us is much greater than the one who is with them, dear Lord. And we believe that. Once again, we come at each and every one of us into your almighty hands. Protect us, Lord. Surround us with your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing the gospel with us. I fully expect to see you in 2020, since it's every two years now that, that you're coming. And uh, we are very blessed by your presence. Thank you. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please stand up, walk around, greet each other with that peace of Christ. Continue with the offering.
Change my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. my heart, O oh God, make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God, may I be like you. I told you it's my church and I do whatever I want. We're going to have a second offering. And you're thinking, we're in a Lutheran church today. We'll put a basket at each place where you come for um, Holy Communion. And we'd like to uh, give a gift, okay? So if, if you can, if you need a credit card, you can do that in the office with Alicia. Um, but let's have a second offering. So we'll put two baskets, one there and one there. Let's all please stand and sing together. Okay, so let's get it started. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, Pastor Rolf, come on up here and help me out, and then four other people to help with communion. So please come on up. We invite everyone to share in the sacrament. We turn no one away.
day begins, the tale anew, until it is through. No words or language, voice is not heard, gone out into all the world. The message shines brightly. As the sun, this day life has begun. The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky proclaims its makers and My impart is knowledge. Please stand. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Share that peace with each other. You know where all the extra points are today. Right there. Give a greeting. Do that now.